Not all champions are optimal for each elo bracket. Some thrive more in low elo and some excel in the higher ranks. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the 5 best champions to climb for every single rank. Since there generally isn't a huge jump in skill from one division to the next, we'll be grouping some divisions together. For example, we'd recommend the exact same champions for iron that we would for bronze, so there's really no point in making a separate list for both. Silver will be grouped with gold, platinum with diamond, and then we'll have a masters and above tier. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. We're going to start off with the lower elos and make our way up the ranks, so Iron and Bronze will be up first. For top lane, Yorick is a really great option for a few different reasons. Game knowledge is going to be heavily lacking in Iron and Bronze, and Yorick is one of the best champions to exploit this. With ultimate available, you have one of the best and easiest to execute split push for any champion. Enemy team will be looking at their mini maps way less often, leading you to taking down their base without them even noticing. All you gotta do is have a look at the mini map before moving up to pressure. The key to split pushing and the main thing you wanna focus on is whether your team is on the map or not. If your entire team is in base, there's not a ton of value in overextending because the entire enemy team can collapse on you for free. As long as you wait for your team to be on the map before you move up. Now if the enemy team comes, even if you die, your team can counter with objectives across the map. Yorick's build has changed quite a bit as of recent with lethality becoming more optimal. It's an eclipse rush into Cyrilda's Grudge 2nd and Black Cleaver 3rd. Comet is run instead of Conqueror as the keystone for added poke from E. Make sure to run Demolish and Secondary so you can mow down those towers even faster. Our jungle pick for Iron and Bronze will have you out of these ranks in no time as Shivana takes a spot. With macro lacking in low elo, it's so easy for you to climb with Shivana by using this one simple strategy. Hard farm and stack as many dragons as possible. With Shivana's passive, not only can she take dragons super fast, but with each dragon secured, she gains bonus armor and magic resist. It's really not that difficult to climb out of iron or bronze as long as you are consistent and Shivana is a jungler who you can have a basic plan with going into each game that's very easy to execute. There's zero point in trying to play a jungler like Lee Sin who relies on ganking and being ahead early when you can play PvE with Shivana and end up way more useful. The build to follow on Shivana is a Frostfire Rush into Demonic Embrace 2nd and Thornmail 3rd, run press the attack as the keystone and take conditioning and secondaries to synergize with your hard farm style. For mid lane in Iron and Bronze, there's nobody who will help you climb faster than Vagar. Games last the longest in Iron and Bronze compared to all other elo brackets, so playing a champion who infinitely scales is amazing value. Not only does Vagar gain AP from last hitting minions with Q, the ability also just makes it way easier to secure minions in the first place. Lining up last hits is pretty basic stuff, but when you're new to the game or have terrible mechanics, an ability like Vague Q makes things so much easier. Like Shivana, Vague has a little mini game himself, as farming as much as possible with Q will allow you to have great impact every single game. The build for Vagar is an ever Frost Rush into Zanya's second and Rabadon's third. Grab Electrocute as the keystone with sorcery for secondaries, running mana flow and transcendence. Honestly, we could recommend this champion for every single elo bracket right now, as Misfortune is so broken. For the higher ranks, there are a few other ADCs who rival her though, while for the lower ranks, she's the number one pick without question. Keep it simple, don't overcomplicate things, and Misfortune helps with that tremendously. Why play an ADC like Vayne who has so much variance and is 100% reliant on auto attacking to be effective when you can play MF, feed all lane, but still out carry the enemy ADC by hitting that one good ultimate? Of course, your goal is not to feed every lane, but even if you do, the impact you can have on games is far greater than most ADCs. Build for MF is a Kraken Slayer Rush into the Collector 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Run press the attack as the keystone and dip into inspiration for secondaries with free boots and biscuits. To round out our iron and bronze picks, for support we have Brand. So many factors as to why Brand is such a powerhouse pick for the lower ranks. Number one is that he has percent health damage. With games lasting longer, you're inherently going to be getting way more value out of Brand's passive than in the higher ranks. Number two is that Brand becomes an absolute monster on his core build completion. If you can complete Landry's, Rylai's, and Demonic Embrace, you will without a doubt be setting the entire enemy team on fire, and with the longer games, the greater chance of hitting this core. With all the AoE damage Brand possesses, he loves the Clown Fiesta team fights, and they occur by far the most in Iron and Bronze. For runes, grab Dark Harvest and pick up Sorcery for secondaries with Mana Flow and Scorch. 
Moving on to our silver and gold recommendations, the top lane pick is going to be Mordekaiser. Mord is still a relatively easy champ to pilot, but does have a bit of a higher learning curve than the champs we had for iron and bronze, which makes him a good fit for silver and gold. Mord has an incredibly strong skirmish post 6, which is an easy power spike to play towards. If ultimate is up, you can exert an immense amount of pressure, and while it's down, you play a little more reserved till it's off cooldown. Playing a champ like Mord, who has a simple win condition like this, is really nice for silver and gold. The core build for Mordekaiser is a Riftmaker Rush into Rylai's second and Demonic Embrace third. For runes, pick up Conquer as the keystone with Resolve for secondaries, running Bone Plating, and Revitalize. Moving on to our silver and gold jungle pick, we have the recently reworked Udyr. Udyr is perfect for these elo brackets, as he's a very simple champion to play, but can be a little more proactive than someone like Shivana early on. With Shiv, you almost always want a full clear, but with Udyr, you have options as his skirmish is quite strong. This is where needing a little more game knowledge comes into play, as weighing out whether you can invade or look for an early gank is more important with Udyr than Shivana. Since all of Udyr's damage is point and click, once those fights break out, it's not hard to be consistently effective. Why play someone like Lee Sin who heavily relies on hitting a skill shot to win skirmishes when you can play Udyr who may not have the same ceiling as Lee Sin but is going to be way more reliable game in and game out. That's really what it's all about in these lower ranks, limiting the variables so that there's less noise and you can improve faster with each game. Standard build for Udyr is a Sunfire Rush into Demonic Embrace second and Dead Man's Plate third. Keystone Rune will be Conqueror and pick up conditioning with Unflinching for secondaries. By far the best mid laner you can play for silver and gold is Heimerdinger. What mid lane champions do we see spammed the most in the lower ranks? Melee Assassins or Fighters. This alone gives Heimerdinger so much consistent power as melee champions have an extremely difficult time against Heimer. You throw down turrets to permashove, poke the enemy with W when they go for last hits, and save E for if they try to dive onto you. A very easy to execute and extremely effective strategy that will have you coming out of lane with massive CS leads and perma priority. If you can take it one step further and use that priority to assist your jungler on invades or collapse on the enemy jungler when they go for crab, your impact on Heimer will be nuts. For the build, Russia Leandries and Designing the second and Rylai's third. If the enemy comp lacks heavy dive champs, then you can grab Rylai's second instead of Zanya's. Keystone Rune is Comet to amplify lane power, followed by perfect timing and biscuits for secondaries. Fresh off his Q buff this patch, our bot lane carry recommendation for silver and gold is going to be Ziggs. In the higher ranks, Ziggs can be exploited a little more when players understand matchups better, but for silver and gold, he's a phenomenal pick. Once you hit Lost Chapter by, you can start spamming Q to acquire perma priority and hem the enemy bot lane under tower. You can then begin chipping away at the enemy's tower, collecting tower plate gold and eventually nuking the turret with W. By running Teleport as your secondary summoner spell, you can base as soon as you have enough gold for Lost Chapter, come back to lane, and have a massive advantage. Playing for Lost Chapter by and using Teleport to create pressure is an easy win condition you can apply to every game. With most ADCs, you are very reliant on your support to help you CS and safely push waves, but since Ziggs can sit back and chuck Qs from such a long range, he can be much more self-sufficient. Build for Ziggs is Leandri's Rush into Archangel's second and Zanya's or Rabadon's third. Run Comet as the keystone while Inspiration is best for secondaries with free boots and biscuits. The best support that we would advise you to spam for silver and gold is Amumu. The long range pick and ability to deal plenty of damage for a support makes Amumu an incredible solo carry. At level 6, you don't even need your ADC to do very much at all as your full combo can heavily chunk enemy squishies. The range you have on Q will be disrespected so often by the enemy bot lane and you'll be able to snowball like crazy because of it. Supports with high impact teamfight tools are always very reliable for the lower ranks, which is a big reason why we like Amumu so much. Games are usually won or lost based on which team finds a catch first, and Amumu is on the winning side of that more often than not due to his great pick range. For the build, rush an even shroud into Zanya's second and Thornmail third. Roll with Aftershock as the keystone and dip into domination for secondaries, running Chief Shot and Ultimate Hunter. As we make our way up to Platinum and Diamond, this is when branching off into champions who have slightly higher learning curves but are extremely strong when mastered is a good idea. Darius is first up and is our top lane pick. To find maximum success on Darius, you've got to know your matchups and when you have openings early in lane. Darius can be the most devastating top laner, but there are more variables you need to overcome in order to get there compared to our top lane picks for the ranks below. As you put the time into Darius and learn his limits, you'll be rewarded greatly over time as there are a few champs who can pull off 1v2 and even 1v3 outplays like Darius can. The core build is a Trinity Force or Stridebreaker Rush into Death Stand 2nd and Dead Man's Plate 3rd. Grab Conqueror as the keystone with Sorcery for secondaries, running Nimbus Cloak and Celerity. 
As we reach the higher elos, it becomes a lot more rewarding to play champions with strong early game impact. Belveth is one of the best skirmishing junglers right now and is a great pickup for Plat and Diamond. The mobility and damage reduction built into Belveth's kit allows her to outplay so many fights if piloted optimally. With the way Belveth's kit synergizes with on-hit items, she gets a massive spike on Kraken and Blade of the Ruin King completion. This isn't the only viable build for Belveth though, as she has the luxury of running a tankier build with Frostfire Gauntlet if you so choose to be more durable. Conqueror is the keystone, with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, pick up free boots and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. For mid lane, the pick for Plat and Diamond is going to be Vex. Vex is quite a bit more mechanically intensive than our previous mid lane picks, which is why she's better suited for the higher ranks. Vex has long range one shot power that resets on takedowns, so if piloted well, you can destroy games with Vex. Vex is super dominant into the majority of mid lane champions with a dash, and there are a ton of them played in solo queue. In Plat and Diamond, matchups begin to matter a little more, so learning them and exploiting Vex's strength is very worthwhile. The build is Eludens or Everfrost Rush into Shadowflame second and Zhanya's third. Grab Electrocute as the keystone, combined with Sorcery for secondaries, running Mana Flow and Scorch. The perfect ADC for Platinum and Diamond is Tristana. In gold and below, you can't expect anything out of your support, so Ziggs and MF are very reliable. Trist is great for this elo bracket, because if you do end up playing with a competent support, Trist is one of the best ADCs at following up on engages. At the same time, if your support has no clue what they're doing, Trist is self-sufficient enough to where she can peel for herself and get out of sticky situations. Being a little more mechanically demanding than our previous picks for bot lane, Trist fits in really well as a great carry for Plat and Diamond. The build for Trist is a Kraken Slayer Rush into Phantom Dancer 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Now that Lethal Tempo has been nerfed, prioritize Hail of Blades to the Keystone with Precision for secondaries being Triumph and Bloodline. This champ is super broken for every elo right now, but most optimal for Plat and Diamond being Blitzcrank. If you're playing anywhere from iron to gold, your ADC may not even follow up on your hooks, which really limits the power of Blitz. In Masters and above, players are confident enough in their positioning that actually landing hooks in lane becomes quite difficult. Plat and Diamond is right in the middle to where your ADC will be decent enough to follow up on your plays, while the enemy team will still make plenty of mistakes for you to punish them. Blitz is also one of the best roaming supports, and once you reach Plat and above, being able to impact the map as a support is very key. The macro and micro skill required to play Blitzcrank is higher than for most supports, but with his current power level, it's definitely worth it to learn him. The build is a Locket or Shirelia's Rush into Zeke second and Wardstone third. Glacial is the most optimal keystone, followed by Resolve for secondaries with bone plating and unflinching. For masters and above, learning a top laner like Camille is extremely rewarding. Most fighter top lane champions have strong dueling power, but lack a reliable way into teamfights. What makes Camille so great is her ability to not only win the 1v1, but participate just as well in teamfights with her incredible engage range and lockdown. Although having different avenues to carry from is great, it requires superior macro knowledge in order to play Camille to her potential. For many of the lower elo champs we recommended, it was all about having a simple game plan to execute on, but with Camille, there's many different ways to be effective. There's also the fact Camille runs Ignite instead of Flash, so learning how matchups work throughout the early levels is super key. If you can master Camille and capitalize on your windows of opportunity, then the snowball power from the champ is completely insane. Core build is a Divine Sunder or Rush into Ravenous Hydra 2nd and Death's Dance or Sterix 3rd. Don't sleep on Sterix now if you're planning to teamfight more after its recent buffs. The Rune Page is Grasp combined with Inspiration for Secondaries, running Free Boots and Biscuits. The best jungler for Masters and above if you can play him to his limits is Graves. Graves is probably the best example of a champ who sucks in low elo but is a monster for the higher ranks. The only thing Graves provides for his team is damage and a bit of utility from W. If you're not mechanically competent on Graves, then he's one of the most useless champs you can play. On the flip side, the amount of consistent damage you can deal while staying mobile and being difficult to take down makes Graves so rewarding if piloted well. Graves is a very feast or famine pick, so you have to be able to execute properly in order to find success. There are two different builds you can run for Graves, the more snowbally assassin-like lethality setup or the more durable fighter build. If you're against a full squishy enemy comp, then lethality will work best, but into more bruisers or tanks, matching them with a bruiser build of your own works great. Keystone Rune is Fleet Footwork, and you'll want to run with Domination for secondaries, grabbing Zombie Ward and Treasure Hunter. Fresh off her mini rework, Syndra is back in an incredible spot for Masters and above. Despite her ultimate being a press R to win nuke, the rest of Syndra's kit is quite mechanically demanding. After all, every single basic ability is a skill shot, so you have to be proficient in order to maximize Syndra's power. 
The constant tracking of ball positioning, using W to reposition them, and simply hitting skill shots consistently makes Syndra a much better suited champion for Masters and above. The long range pick power and ability to insta give a squishy target provides Syndra with immense solo queue power. Two different builds going around right now, as you can run the standard Ludens into Shadow Flame and Rabadons, or swap out Ludens for Night Harvester. First Strike is the most optimal keystone, with sorcery for secondaries, running Transcendence, and gathering Storm. Masters and above is without question the elo bracket where Draven excels the most. Your support should be good enough to where they can take advantage of Draven's laning power, especially if playing someone like Nautilus, Thresh, or Blitz. Games in high elo are won or lost within the first few minutes way more than in low elo, so perfecting a strong early game ADC like Draven is extremely good value. Snowballing is easier than it's ever been with Draven thanks to the addition of Treasure Hunter combined with his passive, so if you gain an advantage and play proper macro, the game is in your hands. Core build for Draven is an Essence Reaver Rush into Eclipse second and the Collector or Lord Dominic's third. Lethal Tempo is the keystone and make sure to run Domination for secondaries, picking up Taste of Blood and Treasure Hunter. Thanks to his recent set of buffs, Thresh is back and an extremely powerful pick for Masters and above. All the little nuances that go into playing an optimal Thresh take an insane amount of games to get used to. This makes Thresh a terrible support for low elo because you'll be way more focused on the mechanics of the champ instead of actually learning the macro elements of the game that progress you as a player. If you're Masters, your game knowledge should be quite good, so branching off into a support like Thresh can further enhance your carry power. There are so many ways to carry on Thresh, as you can hit that game-changing hook, save your teammates with a clutch lantern, or flay the enemy away as they try to dive your back line. With this comes a lot of different things you always have to be thinking about, which is why Thresh is best suited for high elo. The build consists of a Locket Rush into Zeke's second and Wardstone third. Glacial Augment is the keystone with Resolve for secondaries, picking up bone plating and unflinching. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So that wraps everything up for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.